like my mama always said, when life gives you lemons, fix bayonets. Welcome back to Last Bastion Labs. I'm Tim, and in this episode, we'll be demonstrating three different methods for machining a bayonet lug for the iconic Remington 870. I mean, what could be better than machining gun parts in the privacy of your own home? In preparation for this project, I watched a U.S. Army training video, Kill or Be Killed. And I've seen Game of Thrones, so I know to stick them with the pointy end. That practically makes me a YouTube subject matter expert. Installing a bayonet on your shotgun is exactly the type of product innovation you can expect from someone who binge-watched The Walking Dead while consuming scotch. Or was it binge-drinking scotch while watching The Walking Dead? Hmm. Now that I think about it, it's probably more like a Venn diagram with equal radiuses. This was Gen 1, made from O1 tool steel and machined on my smithy. Quick background. After watching way too many machining videos, I had my first brain aneurysm and purchased a used Smithy 1324 off of Craigslist. After returning to home base with my prize, I disassembled the mill and painstakingly moved it piece by piece to the basement. After reassembling and setup, I quickly ran through the ClickSpring Welcome to Machining syllabus. This was the first time I'd ever machined something I had designed. It was a fun project with lots of learning. The biggest takeaway? I don't like turning knobs. Thanks for sticking with me. I thought it was time to share a little of my history, and I wanted to demonstrate how far I've come since my first aneurysm. Now on to Gen 2, the CNC version. It's a smaller, sleeker design with lots and lots of unnecessary 3D contouring. This is exactly the type of part that will get you a face-to-face -face muster with the head of the machine shop. That's what I love about my Tormach. Having the ability to machine anything I want without answering to anyone is my definition of living the dream. Okay, so full disclosure. Right after completing the machining and filming for the Gen 2 bayonet fitting, a Micro Arc 4th Axis showed up in my stocking. Apparently, I was a good boy in 2020. I think mostly because I didn't do anything in 2020. Or the mask helped protect my identity. Anyway, I decided to remake the part using the fourth axis. This will kind of give you a comparison between the conventional way and the advantages of a fourth axis. We'll cruise through this part and cover the machining strategy when we get to the fourth axis. This part shown here had four different setups. The advantage of the fourth axis is we're going to do this part with just two setups. You know, I'm not entirely unpleased with that. And it fits. I took the time to model the part and the stock within the assembly of the fourth axis. This provides a sanity check that I hope will allow me to avoid any collisions between the tool and my new toy. I'm leading off with an adaptive tool path using a three flute half inch end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. Hashtag not sponsored. For the subscribers who care, I'm running 7,000 RPM, 3 thou feed per tooth, 30 thou width of cut, and 0.5 depth of cut. Wow, look at those chips fly. The goal here is to remove the bulk of the material but still leave some support material. There was a little chatter on the very end of the part if I ran this part again, I would go with a thicker stock so I had more material at the bottom. As you can see in the video, it's a little thinner than I would like on the bottom. So how many of you caught that? Don't worry, you can see it again here in a second. Watch the flex in the part as we drill with a number 21 drill for the 1032nd thread. So this is obviously less than optimal, 
Next time, I will drill this hole in Op 1. I don't know about you, but I just love watching the part rotate to its next orientation. If I had an automatic tool changer, I would hit cycle start and come back to a finished part. I simply love my micro arc. My only disappointment thus far on my spinny fourth axis journey has been with Fusion 360. A rotary toolpath would allow me to machine 360 degrees continuously. This option requires you to purchase a Fusion 360 machining extension. The price as of July 2021 is down to $1,100 per year, which is a big improvement from last year. The crux of the matter is that the machining extension has extensions that I really don't need. I don't have a problem buying software, but Fusion, if you're watching, how much for one rib? I should also point out that I am currently not sponsored by Tormach or Fusion 360. The bulk of the material removed, we move on to clean up. I'm using a four flute ball end mill cutter and a parallel tool path to complete the radius. To clean up the tabs that are used to lock the bayonet into the lug, we'll be using a two flute eighth inch end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. In our final operation before parting off, we'll be using a ball end mill cutter to cut in these chamfers. Moving on to parting off. Separating the part from the stock with a bandsaw would be faster. However, that's not how the cool kids do it on the interwebs. As stated in previous videos, I will never be cool, but that won't stop me from trying to achieve some level of coolness. Besides, I'm in the basement, the bandsaw is in the garage, and there's that whole stair climbing thing. I think we can go just a little bit thinner. And I think that's close enough. You have no idea how satisfying that is. You realize you're witnessing history in the making. This must be the first time that anyone on planet Earth has ever machined a bayonet lug for a shotgun on a fourth axis in his basement. See kids, not all binge drinking is bad. Off camera, I cleaned up the parting surface and added the round. I did have to climb the stairs anyway. I had to add the slot with the bandsaw. I know what you're thinking. You have a micro arc, but you don't have a spinny wheel arbor of death? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's on the list. Here's a comparison between Gen 1 and Gen 2. On the Gen 1, I decided to try my hand at parkerizing. I just followed the Brownells video that I found online. With most treatments, surface prep is key. I scrubbed the surface with a Brillo pad and had lackluster results, but I have been very pleased with anything that I bead blasted. Now it's time for a test fit. Again, I'm not entirely unpleased. Looks like it checks 4-0 on deck. So in closing, do I really need a bayonet on my shotgun? Probably not, but as Grand Thumb says, it's okay if you look cool. My MDP, or Master Diabolical Plan, is to design and build parts that would transform my Remington 870 into a total custom zombie stopper. I hope you will follow me on that journey. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Please feel free to like and comment below. And if you feel that I am worthy of your time again, please subscribe. I'm Tim from Last Bastion Labs, checking off station.